beloved, you are welcome to another edition of the way of salvation. And I believe that you are being enlightened by what I'm sharing in these times. You are not allowing fear into your body for demons to win in your life. We thank God for that. We are here again to look into the word of God and learn more about fear that demons are trying to push into human beings and cause us to lose the spiritual battle. So today, I want us to look at what happens when you have fear in you. What happens when you have fear in you? So agree with me as we turn our Bibles to first book of John. The first book of John, chapter 4, verse 18. It says that there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. Amen. What I want us to look at is that Fear has torment. According to the scripture I just read, fear has torment. It means that all those who harbor fear are not perfect in God's love. If you have fear in you, you are falling short of God's love. It means that if you love God, and know that he also loves you, you will not have a fear that he will abandon you. You see, if you love someone and you know that he also loves you, you will never have a fear that that person will abandon you. You will never do that. You see, the thought of fear will allow demons to punish you emotionally and make you weak in faith and die. What I'm saying is that in these times of the coronavirus, if you entertain fear in your body, it means that you are going away from the love of God and you are thinking that God has abandoned you. So if you think that God has abandoned you, then you are inviting fear into your body for fear to come and torment you. That is why the Bible says that fear involves torment. You see? Because he who fears has not been made perfect in God's love. You see? Because we believe in the love of God and his protection for his children, there is no way I will have fear in me that God will abandon me. Why? Because I know I love him and he also loves me. It's exactly as the bond of love between two lovers. If a wife knows that the husband loves her very much and the husband also knows that the wife also loves him very much, there's no way one will be afraid that the other will abandon him or her. That is exactly what is happening. In view of what is going on in the world right now, there's no way as a child of God you should harbor fear as if God will abandon you. He didn't tell you that he is coming after you. So don't allow fear to torment you. It, if you allow fear to torment you, you are bringing it upon yourself. You are bringing the torment upon yourself. And that is wrong. So don't do that. So that is the first thing I want us to look at. Fear has torment. So, so don't allow this torment to be in your life. Amen. Okay, let's turn our Bibles to 2 Kings chapter 1. I, I want to read from verse 1 to 4. It says that Moab rebelled against Israel after the death of Ahab. Now Ahaziah fell through the lattice 
of his upper room in Samaria and was injured. So he sent messengers and said to them, Go, inquire of Baal-zebub, the god of Ekron, whether I shall recover from this injury. But the angel of the Lord said to Elijah, the Tishbite, Arise, go to meet the messengers of king of Samaria and say to them, Is it because there is no God in Israel that you are going to inquire of Beelzebub, the god of Ekron? Verse 4 says, Now therefore, thus says the Lord, you shall not come down from the bed to which you have gone up, but you shall surely die. So Elijah departed. Amen. What it means is that fear will let you abandon your Christian values or your spiritual principles. Fear will let you abandon your Christian values or your spiritual principles. You have to understand that every nation has its fundamental principles and values enshrined in their constitution and in the anthems. Every nation has that. That is why when a leader flouts them, they are impeached and removed. You see, they want you to cherish the values and the principles of the country of which you lead. So if you flout that, they take it as serious offense. That is exactly what happened in this scripture. If someone flouts the constitution of a nation and is impeached and removed, what about spiritual constitution? It is the same. What happened in the Bible was that King Ahaziah was the king of the people of God, the nation of God called Israel. And at that time, he was battling a disease. It is the same way that in this time, the people around the world are also battling a virus, battling a spiritual disease. What did King Ahaziah do? He sent messengers to go to Ekron and consult Bazibub, a demon, concerning his health. You see, the king took a, a step that was contrary to the fundamentals of the nation of which he was the king. He wanted to inquire from another realm of the spirit concerning a disease he was battling. So as the messengers were going, God showed Ahaziah that he has flouted spiritual constitution. He has violated spiritual laws. So he sent messengers to tell uh, King Ahaziah that is there no God in Israel? Meaning that have you forgotten that I am in charge of this nation called Israel? That you have sent messengers to another side of the spiritual spectrum to seek healing. Because you have done this, you will not come down from the bed of which you have gone up. You will surely die. So I'm here as a prophet of God. Just like God sent Elijah to deliver the message. I'm here to tell the nations of the world. That we are doing the same. What Ahaziah did. Is, is what many countries around the world are doing today. Many of the nations of the world. As I said earlier. Have your constitution. You have your principles. You have your values. You have your anthems. That is what you are doing. You see? So, in America, you have written on the currency note or the dollar bills that in God we trust. You said this, your forefathers or founding fathers said this in times of war, in times of famine, and in times of hardship. That is how these assertions came about. They wanted to differentiate themselves from the communist countries who didn't believe in God. 
by telling God that, that for us Americans, in God we trust. When you look at the banknotes or the currency notes of England or UK, you see the church towers on them too. In Ghana, my country of birth, we also say God bless our home land Ghana. We bring God in everything we say. God bless our homeland Ghana. And we say we depend on God. Sometimes we even say and we are still saying that the battle is the Lord's. Now, if the battle is the Lord's, where do we go? Where do we go to fight it? I always tell my church people to make truthful and concrete analysis. Ask yourself, if God is the one you trust. And he has allowed a virus to operate in this world. Where do you go to fight it? Is it not the church of God? But the irony of it is that we have rather closed the houses of God. It tells you the level of unbelief in today's politicians. They don't believe anymore of the fundamental values of their forefathers. You see? And that is a big shame. You see? It is a big, big, big shame. If you trusted God, if your forefathers trusted God, that he could deliver them from the enemy in times of war and famine, why can't you trust God? That he will heal and prevent you from being attacked by a virus. That is a, a big shame. America used to lead the world in Christianity. But today, America has let God down. You are pushing God away from the nation. That you don't even want to hear the word Christ. Some are fighting that they should stop the children from praying the Lord's Prayer in school. They are abandoning the fundamental values of the forefathers. So you see what is happening? You see what is happening? As God told King Ahaziah of Israel that you will die, that is exactly what is happening. So I'm here to announce and tell the nations around the world who are using the name of God in your constitution and in your national anthems and in your pledges that if you say you believe in God, then demonstrate your faith. So I'm here to ask you, in this era of the coronavirus, where is the faith? your fathers where is the faith there is a song and a hymn that when we used to attend some of the orthodox churches when we were growing up there was a song we were singing faith of our fathers living still we were telling other people that the faith of our fathers is still living in us but it is very sad that the generation of our day has abandoned the faith of our fathers. America was strong. You couldn't stand them because of the faith of their fathers. The faith of your fathers. They believed in God, but now you are throwing all away. That is why God said to Ahaziah that you die. So I'm here to tell you, go back to the faith of your fathers who stood for God in faith and show him that you still believe in him. Amen. It was the same way that King Saul who was the leader of God's people of Israel and King Saul was also confronted with a physical war. His was not a spiritual war but a physical war. Goliath was standing on the other side of the mountain threatening and belittling and insulting the God of Israel. When King Saul, who was the tallest among the people, saw and heard the blasphemy of Goliath, he ran away and hid in his room. The leader of the nation of God ran away. He abandoned God. He forgot the constitution of Israel. He forgot who was in charge of Israel and abandoned his God and ran away and hid in his room. Let me ask you a question before I proceed. When a nation who profess to be godly 
is confronted with war. Either physical or spiritual. Do you run away or you stand to confront it? Do you run away or you stand to confront it? Haven't you heard that he who fights and runs away lives to fight another day? That is to say that it is better to face the, bit, the bitter pill than to run away. So the wise thing to do in times of war is to face and let your God you believe in fight for you to give you victory. But unfortunately, the leader of God's nation, Israel, ran away. When David came along the scene, he demonstrated that as for me, I believe in my God who is still in Israel. here. So I'm going to fight this battle. I'm going to fight Goliath. So I'm here to tell you, all the Christians who are listening to me on this channel, stand up and let us fight this battle of Goliath. In fact, this virus is, 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 is the Goliath you are facing in your other part of the world. So stand up as a Christian and fight it. Don't allow this virus to overshadow you with fear. If you do that, fear will torment you and you will die. You see, stand up as David and God will give you victory. David said in first uh, Samuel chapter 17, he said that I will kill this man today for Israel to know that there is God here. Hallelujah. So demonstrate your faith and don't be afraid. This is very sad that the leaders of the Christian countries of today have abandoned their faith and they have reduced God to nothing. Sometimes I wake up and I'm in, I'm in tears. I wake up and I'm crying. And I'm asking my God, do they really know who God is? Do you really know who God is? Just look at your body. The way he has put up the mechanisms, the sinews and tissues and the veins and the bones and things together, how one connects with the other and you stand as a human being. It's, are you not fearfully and wonderfully made? It doesn't that amaze you? And go out and look at his creation. Everything you see was created by God. And he himself has said that we should not be afraid of any perilous pestilence. I've said that in, in the other episodes. He himself has said that. If there is a pandemic, we should not be afraid because it will not come near us. What is wrong with us? It is all because the nations are being led today. The so-called Christian nations are being led today by leaders who don't believe in God. And that is a big shame. It is a big shame. Let us go back. Let us go back to the faith of our fathers. You have to repent before it gets worse. The demon is killing. The demon is killing. If you repent and believe in God, you will live and not die. In Jesus name. Amen. Let's turn our Bibles to 1 Samuel chapter 13 again. 1 Samuel 13. And I want us to read 11 through 13. When Israel cried for a king, God gave them one in the person of King Saul I'm talking about. And, 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 the, and the prophet Samuel told him to go ahead of him to Gilgal and wait for him for one week. He, Samuel, will come and perform a sacrifice. Let me say it again. The prophet told the king, the leader of the nation, go there and wait for me. If a prophet is speaking on behalf of God, it means he knows Whatever will happen in front. Go and wait. Let's see what happened. In 1 Samuel chapter 13 verse 11 through 13. When Samuel came, Saul had already performed the sacrifice. He couldn't wait. He performed the sacrifice. So when Samuel came, let's see what happened. In verse 11. And Samuel said, What have you done? Saul said, When I saw that, the people were scattered from me and that you did not come within the days appointed 
and that the Philistines gathered together at uh, uh, Mishmash. Then I said, the Philistines will now come down on me at Gilgal. And I have not made supplication to the Lord. Therefore, I felt compelled and offered a burnt offering. Listen to what Samuel said in verse 30. And Samuel said to Saul, you have done foolishly. You have not kept the commandment of the Lord, your God, which he commanded you. For now, the Lord would have established your kingdom over Israel forever. Hallelujah. The next point I want to talk about is that fear will let you take wrong decisions. Fear will let you take wrong decisions. You see, King Saul also forgot that he was a leader of a country and that country was based on the word of God. The country was founded by God Almighty who created the heavens and the earth. So when the command comes for you to wait, you have to wait. He was talking about the enemy. You see, well, because people are looking at the enemy, we, we, we become afraid and forget about the word of God. You see, coronavirus is killing people. So we have forgotten about our Bible. My goodness. Why did we say we are Christians? Why? Why? Why did you believe my God? Why? What was your basis? You are looking at virus. In the Bible, some of the miracles God did can baffle you. Have you forgotten your Bible? So King Saul did the same thing. You see? That is what some presidents, some prime ministers, and, and some governors have done. They have taken wrong decisions like in Saul because they are afraid of the virus. They think the virus is coming to devour them. So they have taken a wrong decision. To them, God cannot protect his people or prevent the virus in the houses of God. That is why they have taken wrong decisions by saying, Let's shut the churches. Uh, if they go there, the virus will, will just attack them. People will be dying. Listen, let's shut the door. Yeah, Mr. Preacher. It's a big shame. It's a big shame. Mr. Preacher and presidents and governors and prime ministers. You are saying you believe in God. Some of you give even holidays when there's the day of Pentecost. Where's your faith? You see, it is an error and a sin before God. You see, they didn't act according to the commandment of God that you should not be afraid of the perilous times. Please, every leader of a country listening to me and watching me today, I'm here to announce as the prophet of God, God told King Saul that your kingdom would have established forever. I'm here to tell you that if you don't repent, God told me that is going to remove some presidents and some prime ministers from power because they have belittled him. Repent and don't act and take wrong decisions like in Saul. I'm here to tell you that God Almighty is still alive. I love you and I don't want you to go to hell because I believe, that's why I always tell people that with God all things are possible. God bless you. I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching this video. I really hope you have been enlightened. To hear more, you may subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell to see more videos. Patsu Kukudatsi has written a very informative book called How Demons Operate. Grab yourself a copy to know how they operate and know how to liberate yourself from demonic oppression. To stay in contact with us, you can reach us through these details. God bless you.